Okay, and welcome to this exciting, exciting tutorial on the Box Method Grid Fluid Design Model for creating website design. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some exciting stuff here. Basically, building your website on the grid method. Grid method was designed, was developed about five, six years ago. And uh, if you use the grid method to design your sites here, It'll be flexible for mobile devices because here's how it works. Here's how it thinks here. There's 960 pixels, roughly fits inside of a 13 inch monitor. Actually, it's technically 13 and a half inches. So there's different types of box models. There's actually 978 grid. I'm not a big fan of that. I like the 960 fluid grid method. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, we're in an illustrator right now. Now, for those of you that don't have Illustrator or don't know Illustrator, I'm going to take this one step at a time. I'm going to make this so simple. We can do a fully grid mock-up using Illustrator, using Photoshop, using InDesign, using Fireworks. I prefer the tool set in Illustrator to do this because it creates very, very flexible settings and I can basically change things on the fly very simply. So let's get started here. All right, when I create an Illustrator document, this particular document happens to be 960 by 640. 960 wide by 640 high. So here's how the 960 grid method works here. Each box here that you see represented by gray, I have this gray background I've created myself. So each box is 60 pixels wide and 60 pixels high. Okay, there's 72 pixels to an inch. So if you do the math, it's 12 pixels to an inch. Now, between each box is 10 pixels on the left, 10 pixels on the right. So each box in between represents 20 pixels. Therefore, the entire total space is 80 pixels. And there's 12 columns. If you count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 columns. Hence, 12 times 80 is 960. Now, the 960 grid takes into account that I have 10 pixels margin to the left, 10 pixels larger to the right. So your live area is technically 940 pixels. 940 pixels. Now, this is a simple design method to use because it's completely divisible. We can have five columns or three columns or two columns or six columns and it's still divisible by 80. So here's how it works. So as an example here. Now, to get started, I want to share with you very powerful techniques. If you don't have your rulers up here, command R brings up rulers, control R for Macintosh. Now, here's how I started document. I always select the direct selection tool first, which is this tool, right? Get direction tool, direct selection tool by simply hitting A key, A key for Macintosh and Windows. Now, pay close attention here. Once I activate the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow, not the black arrow, that's the most powerful tool in the whole arsenal. So at this point, as an example, say that I want to create a rectangle, which I want to do. The shortcut for the rectangle tool is the letter M. It's not the letter R. The letter R is for rotating. So M creates the rectangle tool. Now, here's my objective here. If I create a rectangle, what doesn't the rectangle tool do? The rectangle tool does not select. So how do I select? I select by simply holding down the command key. This technique works in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Quirk Express, Fireworks, Flash. Anytime you hold down the command key, Macintosh, or the control key in Windows, it will go to the last one of these tools you selected. So as an example, I started out the project by doing A key. A key is gonna select the direct selection tool. Therefore, whatever tool I'm in, if I'm in the B for brush, if I'm in the L for oval, I can go to a selection tool by simply holding down the command key. So I just want to be very clear about that, okay? If you understand that concept, this whole project is very, very simple, okay? Now, by default, by default, when I create something here, by default, Illustrator defaults to white, fill, black, stroke. Here's my fill, here's my stroke. What I want to do is I want to fill this with red as an example, just because we can. 
We're going to fill this with red, and I want to stroke it with nothing. So if I hit the X key to exchange, the X key will watch over here. Exchange is between fill and stroke. Fill and stroke. The forward slash key, which is the question mark key, if I hit the forward slash key by selecting the stroke, it gives me no stroke. So this is how I want to start my design with red box. I just want to make a bunch of red boxes. So here's how it works. Okay. Now, if I'm in the rectangle tool and I got there by hitting the letter M, wherever I click, that's where it's going to start, that top left hand corner, that's where it's going to start to make that box. Incidentally, before we go further here, under the preference menu, we're going to set our units of measurements to pixels. Pixels for stroke, pixels for general. This program, because it's a desktop publishing program by default, it defaults to points. We want to default to pixels because we're going to build a 9 and 60 to a grid that we can bring into our Dreamweaver file and build over on top of it. Also for layout and design, 960 grid is very, very fluid, very, very good thing to know, and I will show you how to do it. Okay, now what we need to do here is create a rectangle. I'm just going to click any place on the page, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just click. This dialog box is going to come up. So let's think about something. We're going to make a rectangle that's going to take up the top portion of my page minus the margins of 10 pixels. So I can simply do this. 10 pixels to the left and 10 pixels to the right is 20 pixels. So therefore, 960 minus 20 is 940. You can do the math, just like in Illustrator, I'm sorry, just like in Dreamweaver, I can do the math, okay? Now, let's take the height. Each box height is 80 pixels, including margin space. So we want to make this 80 times 2. 80 times 2 is 160. So we're going to make our top threatening box for this 940Y by 160 high. And I hit the return key. Okay, now, where do we want to place this? Now, of course, we can hold down our command key and place it up here. Then we're kind of guessing. With CSS, we have to be exact. We're going to turn this file into a grid, comp grid, that we can bring into Dreamweaver and build our CSS over on top of it. But this is a very good design tool using the 960 fully grid box model method. Say that five times fast. Now, what I want to share with you here is I want to bring up a couple of palettes. First palette is Swatch's palette. Second palette is the Transform palette. Third palette, which we're not going to use too much today, is the Layer palette. All palettes and all Adobe programs under the Window menu. Window Swatches, Window Transform. So here's how this works. I'm going to take the transformation here. And if you click right here, I want to move this box. It's already the right width and height. I want to change the X and Y positioning. X, of course, is horizontal. Y is up and down. So we're going to change this to X position. We're going to change this to 10 pixels over. Tab key, 10 pixels down. So therefore, it puts it right into place. How cool is that? 10 pixels over, 10 pixels down. Okay. Now, I want to move this box and create a three column grid below it, a three column grid below it. So how can I do this? Well, anything about the object, what Illustrator does, Illustrator creates objects. Anything about the object is under the object menu. So let's look at the object menu for a second. Based on these choices, object, object, transform, anything about transformation is under the object transform menu. I can repeat a transformation by hitting Command and key D, which is a very powerful technique, which I'm going to share with you. So what we want to do here is we want to move this object. Now, we're not going to physically move the object. We're going to make a copy of the object. I just want you to understand how the program thinks and how I can use math to solve my problems. Okay? So based on these choices, let's get started here. We don't want to move this horizontally, so we're going to put it in zero. We do want to move it the height of itself. Well, what is the height of itself? Well, if you come over here, you can see the height of itself is 160 pixels. So vertically, we want to move this 
160 pixels plus plus what? Plus 20, plus 20 pixels. Therefore, it's going to take this and it's going to move it down horizontally is x, vertical is y. And we want to make a copy. Very important step here. We want to make a copy. So there's our second box. Our second box is at the exact same place and it's separated by 20 pixels. 10 for the top box, 10 for the bottom box. 10 and 10 is 20, the last time I checked. Okay, now here's the fun part. We want to set this up into three columns space with 20 pixels of space. So I call this next technique the hand method. What do I mean by that? I have five fingers, I have four spaces. However many spaces you have, it's one less than the amount of objects that you're going to come up with. So as an example, if you had 50 boxes, how many spaces would you have? 49. If you had 77 boxes, how many spaces would you have? 76. Again, it's the hand method. Look at your hand, look at your fingers. How many space for five fingers? I assume that you have five fingers. If not, you have to do math. So five fingers give you four spaces. So what does all this mean? We want to have three boxes. So how many spaces am I going to have? I'm going to have two spaces. Three boxes give me two spaces. Five boxes give me four spaces. One million boxes give me 999,999,000 spaces. It's always one less. So how does that help me? Well, we're going to come to the width right here, and we're going to get rid of the space first. We're going to take the width of this, which is 940 pixels here. These are my master techniques. It's to build a pixel-perfect website. Pixel-perfect, right on the money, every time. So we need to get rid of the space. So how much space do we have? Three boxes. I have two spaces. How much is each space? Each space is 20 pixels. 20 times 2 is 40. So we're going to take 940 and literally minus 40. Minus 40 pixels because we have to get rid of the space first for the width. For the width here, we need to get rid of the space. Now, how many total boxes do we need? Well, we need three. So how do we get three boxes that are equally spaced? We divide this, we simply divide by three. Divide by three which gives us this box. Simple, simple, simple. Now, I need to go back to the object menu. Anything about the object is under the object menu. Object transform, move the object. Command option M, moves the object. Then, based on these choices, how do I want to move it? Well, I don't want to move it vertically, so vertically we're gonna put zero. We do want to move it horizontally. How much horizontally do I want to move it? I want to start moving it the width of itself. What is the width of itself? Well, according to the property palette, the width of itself is 300 pixels. I'm going to put in 300 pixels plus the space between, which is plus 20 pixels, because each grid is separated by 20 pixels. And I'm going to make a copy of this. So therefore, it's going to move over 300 pixels plus 20. Simple, simple. Now, here's the simple, simple part. This is why I enjoy using Illustrator. Anything you do to the object, you can repeat the transformation by simply hitting Command D. So let me explain this. Anything about an object is under the object menu. So what we've done right here is we have transformed the object by moving the object. More specifically, we copy the object. Now, unfortunately, copy is not part of this written scenario, but I did move the object, I did copy the object. Therefore, Command key D, Macintosh, Control key D for Windows would repeat the transformation. Simple, simple, simple. All I have to do here is throw the math at it and it figures out the rest. It's a genius method. I've been using this method for decades. I've been teaching this program since 1987. So if there's a better, quicker way to do things, I'm guy. So if I simply command D, that makes my next perfectly aligned grid. Make a change, save a change. Okay, now we want to do something a little different here. Down here, over here in the bottom left here, we want to have maybe 
one, two, three separate uh, maybe buttons or separate sections, maybe ads or something that go down here. So how can we do that? We're going to take this box and take the height of the box. What's the height of the box? Now, if I want to be totally, totally lazy here, I can take the height of the box and I can copy that. Command C, copy. Therefore, when I go to move this object move, which is command option M, move object, we're going to move this. We're going to move this not horizontally, zero. We're going to move this to height of itself, which is vertical, plus, plus 20 pixels. I always want to put that 20 pixels back into my grid and always make sure you click copy. If I don't hit copy, it's going to move this. I don't want to move this. I want to copy this. Okay, now, between this top and this bottom here, I want to have four separate boxes. I want to have four separate boxes. Actually, considering the size here, let's say we want to have three separate boxes. Let's go with that. How would I get three boxes? Well, if I have three boxes, how many spaces? Not how much space, but how many spaces. Forget the how much space, how many space is. Two different things. So if I have three boxes, how many, how many spaces do I have? Two, again, it's the hand method. Hold at your hand, five fingers, four spaces. Three fingers, two spaces. One finger, no space. Okay, so what do I do with that information? So what's the height of itself? Well, here's the height of itself right here, 160 pixels. So how many spaces do I have? If I want three boxes, I have two spaces. My space is 20 pixels. Two times 20 is 40, so I'm going minus 40 pixels. Simple, simple math. If you guys slept through fourth grade math, this is going to make your head fall off your shoulders. I just want to keep this so simple. Illustrator will do the math for you. So I minus the 40 pixels. Okay, then how many boxes do I want? Well, here's the height of the box. I want three of them, so I can divide by three. Simple. Genius. There's my box. Now I go back. Now if I want to be totally lazy again, here's the height of the box, 40 pixels. I can copy the height of the box. Therefore, when I go back to, we're doing the same technique over and over and over. So when I go back to transform, move, we're going to move this. We're not going to move it horizontally. We're going to move it vertically, the height of itself. The height of itself plus the space, which is 20 pixels, because it's a 20 pixel grid between each box. It's 20 pixels between each box. 10 for the top and 10 for the bottom. Always make sure you hit copy. So how do I get that second box? Command key D. Object, transform, repeat transformation, command D. Command D. So if you want to keep going with that, you could. So. There I have four boxes, okay? We don't want four boxes. Make a change, save a change. So it's really, really this type of thinking over and over and over and over again. So let's finish this area in here. We want to put a, a single column right in here. So how do I do that? Now again, I just want to share with you, yes, we could drag this down to here and we could hold down the shift key and all that fun stuff. But I just want you to get very used to the math and what I'm doing here. It's very simple process. This way it's absolutely pixel perfect. If you do it this way, it's pixel perfect. So let's take this box, the height of itself. What's the height of itself? Well, according to the measurement palette, it's 160 pixels high. So I can take this box, object, transform, move, command, shift, M. Control to M for Macintosh, and I could say move with the height of itself, which is paste. Copy, paste, plus, plus my 20 pixels, and make a copy. So there you go. Then I need to add back the space. So I'm going to take the width of itself, the width of itself, times 2, times 2, plus what? You guessed it, plus 20 pixels. So bingo, bango, boingo, right on the money. So it doesn't matter how many columns, how many widths, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Make a change, save a change. So I'm going to get into very complex designs 
and show you how to do it the professional way is my techniques. I can assure you, you will not find these techniques any place else. Any place else. Use the tool. Get to know the software. We can do the same thing in Fireworks, in InDesign, Photoshop. But I like this program. It's a vector-based program. This program does what other programs don't do. It's for, InDesign does a lot of this stuff, too, by the way. But I like Illustrator best because it's a fluid vector-based program. So we'll continue with this next video. I'll probably post that sometime tomorrow. So carpe diem, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Take your time with it.